I don't know. What's like yellow fever, but only for Koreans? K fever. K fever. This that's what this guy got. That K. Yeah. I was like, I get like that because it's like it's like that Hollywood naming scheme of just K this K that. Yeah. This man's straight K fever. K fever. You have K fever. Have fever. You have K fever. I was uh, <laughs> actually I can tell this on the podcast. I mean, we could just start. No, we all started. Uh, we have started. I was out with uh, my Vietnamese okay. friend the other day. Well done. You said it correctly. And she brought one of her friends that I guess she is from America. She's Chinese, but she was born in America, and. Uh, she just like came to Korea to visit or whatever. She comes here a lot. And we're sitting, we're all drinking, and I don't even remember how like we got to this. We were talking about something, and sh- she asked me like, "Oh, would you ever want to live in China?" And I was like, "Yeah, I don't know. Like maybe. Like not really. There's nothing that really appeals to me there." And she's like, "Yeah, but Chinese girls are so pretty." And I went, "Yeah, are they?" <laughs> she got. She was like, "I'm Chinese," and I was like, "I mean, I, I." And she's like, oh, you're just one of those guys that only likes Korean girls. Huh? Uh, <laughs> like, got him. She called no. you out. I got him. She got it, dude. Uh, I got him. Right away, she knows your uh, type. Uh, also, I like how you said she's Chinese, but she's born in the U.S. So she's Chinese American. Say she, it, Hannah. The way she said Say it, it Hannah. So the way she explained it, she was born in America. Like she has a U.S. passport, yes, yeah. but she moved to China when she was like one. I mean, this guy's Chinese too, but he's also <laughs> Ecuadorian and American. That's the beauty of having multiple nationalities you can identify as all of them i don't have the chinese one though she do <laughs> <laughs> my first question to her actually about it was like when you did you have did you like change to a chinese passport because i didn't know at the time that she had u.s passport and i was like oh so you were born in america for like a year and then you went to china so do you have a chinese passport she's like no nah, i got the american passport she was like yeah because uh i was like oh yeah because you can't have dual passports and she's like all right or she said you can't have dual passports so i was like oh yeah it's the same in korea and she's like well korea you can kind of just not tell them. She's like, China, we'll find out. No, actually, you <laughs> kind of... Like, they will no. find out. For Korea, you kind of do tell them, because especially if you're leaving Korea, uh, you got to tell them because then they mess up the... What? The family re- the family registry mm. for their descendants. Ah. Uh. <laughs> may or may not be speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> also, we're just cracking open our beers for yeah, the... Uh, we got some tall boys today. Spotify listeners. Hi... Hunter bought us non Budweisers. Look at this guy. I know because they it was cheaper to get these ones. Look, cheers, ones. cheers, ding, ding. I can't wait for in fifty years when we finally pop off that uh, we're gonna get like hit with so many, sp- you know what, DMCs and stuff. DMCA's. DMCA's. <laughs> oh, these guys are just promoting Heineken. Yeah, they're, you're welcome, Heineken. <laughs> 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 Feel free to pay us for it. We'll take it. <laughs> Shit. So we uh, we had our last episode come out about the meats. Mm-mm-mm. It was uh, not as good audio quality as I expected it to <laughs> yeah, be. Yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was a hard listen. It apologies was. Apologies to the listeners. Yeah, so apologies but for that. We tried to give you something new. Yeah. A fun experience. It was, yeah. uh, but we had, a, we had a good time. So we're back with new lighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you just acknowledge it, they can't say anything. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Get them before they get you. So where were we? What were we saying? I think we were roasting you. No, we were talking about the audio quality of... Uh, so roasting Hannah. Yeah. No, that actually Our wasn't my man. fault. That actually wasn't my fault that time. Because we didn't use my mics. Oh, true. We never used... And I realized after I got home that I had my mics in my bag. So like we have, we, we went through kind of this process of like having to record through like my MacBook and like this all, the, all this separate stuff. And I had extra mics in my bag and I completely forgot about it. I'm not going to lie. I usually never bring them. The recording time was pretty chaotic. Yeah. Because we went from... Chilling, 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 chilling to, oh, shit, our train's in an hour 30. <laughs> we have to record. <laughs> yeah, we almost didn't make it back because we couldn't find taxis. Yeah. We were kind of worried about that. But we, we got I don't know. You say we were worried. Certain someone was very excited to miss a train. <laughs> <laughs> because, all right, so I'll just get this clear. Um, we did talk about how the meat, although it was delicious, it was rather a small portion and it was slightly overdone. And so Slightly? <laughs> it was well done. And well so done? It was well done. It was done, done well? <laughs> <laughs> but then when we were walking back to get the, the, the taxi, we walked past the part where it's like like the outdoors, oh, yeah. barbecuing. Mm-hmm. Everyone was grilling their own yeah, meat sort of a I thing. And I was like, fuck, I want to get some more. Like, I, I wasn't satisfied at that point. I was like, I want more. It was delicious. I want more. Uh, so I was basically saying, because we had to get two taxis, right? Mm. I was like... All right, let the people who absolutely need to get back to Seoul today take the first taxi, 
And then those of us that don't really matter, let's uh, <laughs> let's get the second one. <laughs> and if we don't make it, we just come back here. We find a hotel, we stay. I feel like there was some lobbying done in that taxi <laughs> by Brian being like, so, you know, we could just stay and let them <laughs> go back. <laughs> no, basically nobody else was willing to stay. I couldn't. I had plans. Yeah, everyone was like someone. they had some kind of plan, yeah. so it was just me. No, but I, I would have loved to stay. But we, I, I wouldn't have stayed alone. We can do a, a trip. I mean, yeah. they, it's, you know, even though that was the festival, it's not like outside of the festival they don't have. Couldn't right, be. and actually, uh, I was looking at some places that have it in Seoul as well, so you don't even have to go all the way. Yeah, but do you want to eat Korean beef in Seoul when you know once the train carrying the beef crosses that border from Gyeonggi-do? Or Gangwondo into Seoul, the price just plus wow. plus forty percent. Boom! It's that Seoul tax. Mm. Probably, but I mean, isn't all beef that comes into Seoul from some uh, somewhere else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why so expensive? So we just take a easy hour train out. We eat some beef. We take a hike in the countryside. That sounds a hike? joyous. I haven't heard that from any of you. <laughs> I went on a hike. Uh, yeah, because you were tricked. Yeah, look at this guy. <laughs> yeah, he went on a hike without us. Yeah. And when I say a hike, it was like a five-minute walk. <laughs> it was not – I wouldn't really call it a hike, but I just started walking up the little But it's like, what did you expect? Thing. They tell you, let's go see a waterfall, and then you're like, oh, yeah, we're just going to drive to the waterfall? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, actually, that's the American in Actually, him. you say that, but it was like that. The only issue was that the cable car wasn't operating that day, and so we didn't take the cable car. And, but even if they walk, it's like maybe a 10 minute walk up a hill. Mm. But there's like an opposite, like you could go up the paved way with like the stairs and stuff, or you can go the hiking route. And so, so where I, was this? This was in Puchon. Puchon. Mm -hmm. It was not a hike. I would not call it a hike. I would call it a stroll through the forest. And yet you called it the hike. Yeah. Because to <laughs> me, it's a, sorry, sorry. To me, it's a hike. To him, it's not a hike. <laughs> True. You would not have considered this a hike. Yeah. It's like when I was in Shanghai, they were like, oh, yeah, there's this mountain you can go to. And I'd go and it's like a hundred meters high. <laughs> it's like this is this this is a mound. This isn't even a hill. <laughs> not even a hill, jeez. So we've changed up the format a little bit. We're not doing the monthly Patreon episodes anymore. Instead, we're doing weekly episodes. Beep, 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 beep. So now instead <laughs> of uh, waiting a month to hear our crazy talk, you can listen every week. So after each podcast, we're going to be recording a little bit, like 20-minute segments uh, after the podcast just to post on Patreon every week. And so if you're interested in listening to us, uh, be a little bit more raunchy, a little bit more unfiltered, a little bit more unlocked more in the Patreon. Cancel -worthy. More cancel-worthy. More mm. cancel-worthy. Mm. Uh, go check out our Patreon. It's $5 a month. You get access to all of that every single week, as well as the backlog of all of our old episodes, which are pretty funny. We have some pretty good episodes on there. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, check out in the description below. It is www.patreon.com slash those foreign guys, $5 a month, and get more bonus content. Okay. Wait, that's all in the address? That's, that's, the <laughs> that's a long address. <laughs> I know. I was like, when does this end? No, Jesus. <laughs> and back to the main episode. <laughs> <laughs> So I actually did a filming this week at my school, oh, for yeah? my school. Mm -hmm. They Was there a black couch? There wasn't. There were some white chairs, actually. <laughs> I've seen that one, too. <laughs> they, uh, they contacted me because they previously, like, I was just walking on campus, and they came up to me and asked me, like. Who's this day, your school? Yeah, yeah, my okay. school's, like, media team, I guess. That's sure. like, it's student-ran, but it, they do the YouTube and, like, the Instagram and stuff like that. And they came up to me, and they were like, hey, can we do an interview with you? And I was like, yeah, sure. So it was like half in Korean, half in English. And then they contacted me again. They were like, hey, uh, would you mind be, would you want to do a full interview in Korean? And I was like, yeah, sure, that'll be fun. So I went to this interview. And while we're sitting there, they were like getting ready to film. And one of the other girls that was uh, about to do the interview with us, she's like, oh, do we get to clap? Like do the slate clap? And I was like, he, the guy was like, oh, I mean, if you want to. And she was like, oh, let's do it. Let's do it. It sounds fun. And I was like, God, I'm just with more Brandon and Brian. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because we do the clap thing when I film for work as well. Yeah. And there's a new camera set up. They've got like a second dude who's come in and started taking the film. And he stole the clap from me. And I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. That's that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, usually it is the camera person. Like, they, like, do, like, a slate from behind yeah. the camera rather than the actual actors doing it. No, but he just kind of, I was like, hey. <laughs> Did you tell him? Did you say I, no, I, my no thing? I said that's my thing. And then <laughs> and then the second, when we shot the second video, he was like, do you want to do it? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to do it. I don't know it. why you guys like it so much. It's just a clap. <laughs> Man, I'm a performer. <laughs> 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 I perform. 
So what did you guys do this week? Any any fun news from your lives? From oh, from our lives? Yeah. I just came back about twenty minutes ago. My oh, yeah. watch is dead. <laughs> I'm oh. looking at a dead watch. About twenty-ish minutes ago, just before starting filming, from Gapyong, a small rural town between Seoul and Chuncheon, and it's a hot spot for campers, glampers, and just sort of cafes with wild or weird concepts. So is this so why you came in today going, guys, we should go glamping. Yeah, yeah, no, this is exactly why I said we should go glamping because that was really fun. Just chilling outside, grilling some meat, staring to the stars, a nice starry sky. And then instead of sleeping on the floor in the dirt, we have a nice bed. <laughs> yeah, so it was, glamping was pretty fun. And then, like I mentioned, the cafes with the weird concepts, we went to a, a petting zoo cafe. So they were just like, a bunch of sheep and a bunch of donkeys and alpaca and rabbits. Yeah, yeah, they Ooh. were alpaca. And man, one of them looked like me with the hair and stuff. <laughs> and he was like, also kind of, they were all white. And then he's like the brown one. And I was like, I feel you, player. <laughs> <laughs> and then we locked eyes and we were just staring at each other for a minute. And then one of the kids was like, I want to feed him. And I was like, get away, kid. <laughs> this is my friend. Oh, I thought you meant he wanted to feed you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe. Oh shit! Whoa, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> That's like that. Do you guys? Do you guys ever see those Reddit posts? Um, I mean, there's so many of them where it's just like a foreigner or something complaining about something stupid, and it was the girl that like was complaining about the foreign kid or the Korean kid that said hi to her, mm -hmm. and it became like this huge meme. Do you guys remember that? I I think. She was like upset that the that the kid automatically assumed that she spoke English because yes. she was a foreigner. I recall hearing this story. Yeah. I, I don't think I read it on Reddit, but in one of the cacao chats I was in, when that story was going on, they had posted screenshots. And I was like, please tell me this is not yeah, real. Yeah, it became did like, she speak it became English? like, yeah, she did. Yes, of course. No, they always do. <laughs> That's the That's thing, they exactly. always do. She was just mad that the, like, like the kid, she was, a lot of her point was like, the kids should be taught that just because I'm a foreigner doesn't mean I'm an English speaking foreigner. It doesn't matter. And I'm like, uh, yeah, for me, I'm like, it's a fucking kid. Who cares? Yeah. Well, also, <laughs> they just want to talk to you. What other language do you think they know how to say hello to? Well, I think the, the her point is like she speaks Korean. And so she's like, why didn't you just say it? In ah, Korean? fuck that. Yeah. Dude. No. No, I agree. I hate that. Yeah. Then what she should do is it's to a kid who's just, they say hi, you say fucking annyeong. Yeah. <laughs> Basic. Now the kid yeah. knows. Say your True. onions. Yeah. <laughs> Say your onions. Your onion haseos. I fucking hate it. Uh, people like that get under my skin. True. Which is kind of funny because now part of that is why I want to just segue into our <laughs> topic today. And I want to flip it around. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> but okay. Uh, we so we had, some, we had a little bit of news. Oh, well, really quick, Brian, did you do anything fun this week? Nope. Nothing. <laughs> you sure? Did oh, I got a tattoo. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was about to say. It looks like something's on your leg there. What's yeah. it? Some dirt? We don't really have a. Uh, maybe this camera can see it. If you. Yeah, ah, there you go. Sexy bamboo right there. Yeah. I don't know. I um. I I saw it on Instagram, and then I was like, I don't know why, why but I really like it. And then I was like, yeah, I'll just go get it. And it was just kind of like a decision, just like that. And so I contacted the guy, sent the deposit. Or not even the deposit. I just paid everything for front and then went to the place and got it. Was it discounted? Yeah, I would say so. Okay, so here's something I have a question about because I'm not a tattoo expert. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, one of you guys can explain this to me. Is like I feel like I hear a lot of people talking about like, oh, yeah, this tattoo was on discount, mm -hmm. and so I went and got it. Uh -huh. But why, why is it on discount? Like what is the difference between them doing that design and just like doing the design you want? Yeah, so a lot of tattooists – practice different kinds of designs and styles and because that's something they've created already they will discount that you mean like mm -hmm. the artwork the artwork gotcha. itself because they they're not doing it for specifically for you mm -hmm. but if you are interested they'll be like okay sure i've done i've done this for myself to practice mm. i'll give you a discount rate also Whereas a lot of the times they want to just like create their portfolio yeah. of their style mm -hmm. gotcha. mm -hmm. so they can they like style, post yeah. their pictures of finished tattoos the way that they would do it Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I was just always curious about that because I was like, what's the difference? Is it, they're using the same amount of ink. They're using the same whatever. I was just like, it doesn't make sense. Why is it this I color? think sometimes also it's uh, when tattooists are kind of like somewhat new. They don't have that many yes. done. So they want to have, again, their yeah. portfolio to show that they have worked on people already. It did look all right. That kind of stuff. Yeah, that and makes sense. A lot of new artists, what I've noticed in Seoul, a lot of new artists always, almost always pay for 
uh, sponsorship on Instagram to promote mm-hmm. your stuff, mm-hmm. and then also offer free tattoos. Mm, I've seen that. A too. lot have been offering free tattoos. Really? Yeah. Ooh. I've but seen. You have, but but the free ones, like it's their choice. It's, no, no, oh, it's yeah. they, you know, well, it's they, their choice. they have like a limited variety where yeah. you can choose one of them, but they're often very small ones and like. It is absolutely their style and choice. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the times they're like really small, cute little cartoonish yeah. drawings, yeah. kind of thing like that. You should get one of those. I feel like that'd be such a juxtaposition to all your like wolf tattoos. <laughs> and stuff. If, if you're just like, yeah, I got this wolf here. I got this. And then like Hello Kitty. Yeah, they're just like, yeah. No, I got actually, this little the kitty one category. that I kind of want to do is the uh, the Jinro Sujo Toad. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we were talking about like, this. Like, yeah, yeah. Like the blue cartoonish one. The blue cartoonish one. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. That Maybe would be just a cute get one of those. Like just put it over here in my ankle. Or you know the the little like Warwick uh, statue that I, I got you. Oh yeah. Like something like that. Like the cute that version of Warwick cool would too. be funny. Like Don't the put it there. Version. Put it on your chest. Because then you can wear a vest, and everyone just sees all these crazy tattoos. <laughs> and then when you get into a real fight, you just fucking rip it off. <laughs> 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 There's this cute little. There's just six, <laughs> six four Jack guy with a shirt. He's just like, is that the general <laughs> from? <laughs> when I was when I was a teenager, like I was, uh, I kind of joked about it, but I think I was also semi serious about it, getting just that yellow smiley face like the have a nice day one mm. just get it tattooed on one of my butt cheeks <laughs> <laughs> please do just that just go just drive around korea mooning everyone <laughs> on the highway. i don't know i i think it was in high school i also wanted to a tattoo of a middle finger on my thumb <laughs> so i could just <laughs> hit people with a thumbs up <laughs> cheers <Ooh>. that would <laughs> be interesting i think the only one that i ever really wanted as a kid because when i was a kid I mean, look. You can probably tell by looking at me that I was into magic as a kid. <laughs> Whoa, wait, there are so many Sorry, different kinds of magic things: magic, tricks. the gathering, magic nope, tricks, magic or tricks. cock went, magic. In, in, <laughs> in middle school, high school, I went through. There was like a four-year period where I was like pretty sure I wanted to be a professional magician when I grew up. I mean, you are. You make women disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, my dream has been realized. Uh, no, but I wanted to get like a tattoo of like an ace, di- like an di- ace of diamonds so that I could do like magic tricks and be like, oh, look, at me. there's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was my because that, that is a very common magic trick that people do where they like will like reveal the card by having the tattoo of the card that like the person picked. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is, that'd be a sick tattoo. It'd be so small and <laughs> I wouldn't really care about it that much. Because I, I, I'm just not someone who wants big tattoos. But now the real trick is to get several tattoos of different cards all over your just body. One, all 52, <laughs> just everywhere. So yeah, like, yeah, what yeah, card yeah. you pick? Oh, yeah, did you know? Yeah, look right here. Well, oh, you gave it. I was like, that's <laughs> off. <laughs> that's the ace of spades right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the ace of spades. That's uh... a... <laughs> oh. Do I not? Is there a reference uh, I'm not getting here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to go further. I think that's for the Patreon. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> not uh, PG for YouTube. So I did sure. something pretty fun this week. Or well, I guess fun's a weird word to describe, but a new experience mm-hmm. today. I took the topic exam. Ah, oh. which, which is? Which is the test of proficiency in Korean. But which there are two tests, right? There's level one, there's level two. Yeah. But it gets so more complicated. Yeah, it's 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 a little weird because like, there's technically six levels, yes. but there's two tests. Oh. So topic one covers levels one and two, and then mm-hmm. topic two covers levels three, four, five, and six. And then based off the score you get on the test determines what level you are. Oh, ah, okay. So I've never taken topic before, so I was a little nervous because just I haven't had like a Korean test ever before. So I was mm-hmm. like, okay, I just want to take the test that I know I'm going to get 100% on and just pass. So I took the topic one, and I felt so confident walking out. I, I, I actually think there I don't did not miss a single question. It's almost like, you know, knowing Hunter. I told him it's gonna be shit easy. <laughs> I t- God damn. That's all I gotta say. But I, the reason is because I looked at like the level three stuff and I was like, okay, this is like a little bit. There are some stuff like I don't know in level three. No, but, but level two so easy. No, that's the catch. So that's why you just gotta do the mock exams for the mm, topic yeah. two and complete the full one. Because it is measuring from level three to six, mm-hmm. yeah. naturally there's going to be shit you just don't get. They Most don't, of it. They, they don't expect get. you to get yeah. mm-hmm. that stuff. And so once you finish the whole thing, you kind of feel like, shit, there was so much I didn't understand. Mm-hmm. Oh, I passed. I got level three. I got level four. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a weird feeling. Yeah. I, after we talked to uh, Lily, one of your friends, she yeah. was on the Patreon episode last week, for those who didn't hear. Um, she kind of explained that to me, and I was like, dang, you know, I wish I could change it. So I went to actually try to change it, but it was too late, so mm-hmm. I couldn't change it. 
Um, but I still feel okay about it because like I'm not really going to be applying for anything that probably needs topic level right now. And anything that I would apply for. Wait, did you graduate this year? Yeah, yeah. But I, what I mean is anything that I was going to apply for that needed a high topic level is going to be like topic five or six. Mm. Like topic three is not going to be enough for the jobs that I would be applying for right out of college. What needs topic five and six? Like Residency a, needs five. Residency and also. Residency doesn't need five as long as you score enough points on all the other stuff. Uh, Which now that I say it, uh, you're gonna need five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I would need five. You are gonna need uh, five because one of them is income. And yes, <laughs> that's why I got yes. zero points on income. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just realized that. No, but most of the jobs that I would be interested in applying for that are gonna require Korean are like broadcasting jobs. What like do they require level four plus? No, no, no. It, working in like Korean broadcasting station is gonna require five or six. Four plus. I did two years of researching, ev- not not just jobs in my field. So many jobs in Korea when I'm I was saying it in the stay. sense of not applying for like cor- like foreigner jobs. No, no, no. I know, I know. No, me too. I did that. You just need four plus because even when you are foreigner, you don't really speak English. Well, I don't think I get four. I would get four. I think the highest I could get is three right now. Okay. So it, either way, so yeah. I just wanted to take this one just so I could get it, kind of the experience of it, and at least like that way. If I, I mean, I do feel like I aced it, so I can at least like when I'm applying, I can tell people like, yeah, I aced it. You know, like I got a hundred percent on it. Here's the results. Like I probably three or four level. Like I just took the wrong one, and maybe kind of use. They're not gonna no. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. The anyway. <laughs> they they don't even care about you know where you How are. They just passed. they just want to see that yeah. certificate. It's yeah. I mean, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it again. And one of the filtering measurements. Do you have it? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. If no, straight into that pile. If I mean, yes, okay. I'm going to take topic two in February. Nice. So I plan it, to too. It'll technically be before I graduate. Technically. I plan to take it then too. Let's you want to study, study buddy? Oh, study buddies. Now that I say it, I regret <laughs> saying study it. Buddies. Uh, it's going to be so fun. I remember when, when I was in China, I took HSK. Yeah. And same. Which is? Uh, it's the Hanyu Shui Ping Kao Shi. Yeah, which I means the <laughs> it's, it's the same thing it's the the chinese proficiency exam yeah and there was an old one which had up to nine levels but then they did they changed it into the new one which is up to six but uh when i when i went to take it unlike fucking you <laughs> i just went straight for five you didn't fuck him <laughs> <laughs> no i just went f- straight for five and i passed that one so then i was like shit i got five baby let's go for six and fuck, dude, the difference between five and six was it might as well have been another language. It so was just insane, mm-hmm. in fucking sane, where like even native uh, Mandarin speakers would be like, God damn, I don't know. Is it That's so how bad it was. Is it like you have to choose which level you want to take? It's not yes, like the topic. You, where have, it's to like cha- you have to choose gotcha. the level. Um, and uh, five was like the one that. Um, if I wanted to graduate from school in Chinese, I needed to have that mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. And but yeah, it was. I mean, I didn't like ace it, but I passed it. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty nice. Yeah. But yeah, then I took six. No, I was like, I'm not taking this shit again. <laughs> Fuck that. So your your highest one was level five. Yeah. Gotcha. But do you think at this point you could probably take level six? No. Oh. I actually, <laughs> I think at this point I probably couldn't take five anymore either. Really. Oh, yeah. uh, you don't really use Chinese that much. Yeah, and like uh, if I were to write, I mean, I can kind of read it still, but if I were to write it, uh, I would definitely need to study again. Mm-hmm. So maybe I could take five if I did like, uh, if I spent a couple months like studying again. Oh my God, I just had a great idea. What if just the, we just all did study together? Because he needs to study Korean too. True. Yeah, yeah but just, th- we could just do those foreign guys study group. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe study to our Patreon us. so yeah. we can uh, s- no, study. actually, unironically. That's actually cool. We can study Korean with our viewers. Mm. Mm-hmm. Be fun. I think that's an idea for maybe a different channel, maybe. Yeah. Those foreign guys go to school. <laughs> <laughs> actually, <laughs> Those also not guys. a bad idea. Those school guys. <laughs> <laughs> one but of the podcasts that I listen to these days, one of them uh, is like a huge content creator, but one of the guys on the podcast is not. He's just one of his friends. And he's like keeps trying to give them ideas for like what they can do for content. And every time I listen to him talk about it, I'm just like, I feel like this is what you guys do. <laughs> like, we just come up with, like, random shit to do. His his big idea is for them to just pay for free parking for a parking lot for people <laughs> and film them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always you who fucking comes up with these new but ideas. But my ideas are good. 
<laughs> many, how many of them have we done? We're doing them as soon as Dogger gets back. So we're waiting for Dogger to get back? Yeah, why, oh, okay. why are we not? No, I, in, in my head, I was scheduling time. I think we're in November 12th and 11th. Okay, so you gotta, you gotta tell us this. Yeah, yeah. What, well, where's we my haven't, calendar? We ha- that's what we're going to talk about Shit, after the podcast. this guy. <laughs> yeah, that is something actually on my list of to-do stuff to talk to you about today. I got three things. Along with the to-dos like make reels and post the pictures that we say. No, no, no. The okay. It's to talk about that, to talk about my birthday. <laughs> By the time this episode comes out, it's my birthday. <laughs> No. Yeah. It would have been his official birthday. But then, after another 28 hours. Eight hours? <laughs> no, 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 more. 32 hours. It'll be the start of his birthday party. No. Yeah. No, and this episode this episode comes out on the 20th. Oh, so shit. It's eight oh, days after. A oh, week my after. God. I thought. <laughs> His birthday is even further away, and he keeps <laughs> wanting to talk about no, this. No, my birthday party is further away. Get my birthday's on Wednesday. Me out. <sighs> Can we cancel Halloween? <laughs> is that an availability? Cancel Actually, Halloween. Oh wait. wait, so this is a piece of news I read that I forgot to put in, but it's just popping back into my head now as I say it. Nice Shit. So in our last episode, we sort of touched on what happened Halloween last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I came across an article about how I think, give or take a thousand five hundred of the first responders who were at the scene, you know, in different sort of fields from Passies. firemen to yeah. policemen to uh, <coughs> paramedics are suffering from PTSD. I can yeah, I can imagine. That's just yeah, it's so, it's so crazy. Yeah. And that's just you know, the government employees. Mm. I mean, unironically, like, I, I planned my party, like, I didn't even really think about it being on Halloween weekend at the time, because I was just like, oh, yeah, it's a week after my birthday. Uh, but now that, like, I've talked to some people who, like, I've invited and stuff like that, I've had a lot Isn't of people. Isn't it two weeks after your birthday? Or a week and a half? No, take the cut. It's like a week and a half after. It's the, it's the <laughs> weekend after the weekend after my birthday. Oh, my, I, my I wish you didn't okay. say. No. It just sounds no, fuck you guys, fuck worse you guys. No, than fuck it you is. Guys. Fuck you both. <laughs> my birthday's on a Wednesday, on the 18th, and then that the next day is all every Korean university starts midterms the next day no. on the 19th. Yes. No. Many universities are starting on Monday. That's weird. I don't know any that do that. O- almost all of my students are starting on Monday. Are they, for are they university or are they graduate school? University. That's weird. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Everyone I've talked to, they start on Thursday. Anyway. Either way, the, that weekend and the next weekend is, like, all midterms for people. So none of my friends, like, my university friends are going to want to go to a party on the weekend when they're in the middle of midterms. Sounds like a good time to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me also, like, get a little break in the middle the of the midterms. That's what I'm saying. That, you know, you need that, that breather. No, yeah. no. You do, it, you do it the weekend after midterms because then people are like, oh, my God, finally midterms are over. I can go out and party. That's exactly why I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> 125 college kids. Being like midterms are done, let's get smashed. I'm petrified. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I'm <laughs> fearing for my life. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. You get. You keep saying that, but honestly, I feel like we're gonna get there. You, it, I feel like it is an environment you will thrive in. I no no. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm gonna thrive. I always thrive. But but you're scared. <laughs> I'm scared, and you're I'm scared gonna, of yourself. I'm scared, and I'm gonna hate it the next day. <laughs> I'm not gonna thrive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian's not gonna thrive. Brian's gonna come with me, and I'm gonna take care of him. And I ordered the thing for my costume though. Oh, oh yeah. You're gonna wear okay. So that's the other thing is that I'm depending on you guys to wear costumes and actually like make that part of it fun because I feel like a lot of the Korean friends are not gonna wear costumes. Oh, I know someone who's gonna wear a costume. Oh. Oh. Don't spoilers. Our good, our good friend, uh, Mr. Peanut Butter. Oh, oh yeah, I've heard. I can. He's I've gonna, heard the spoilers. He's gonna wear a costume. I haven't heard the spoilers, but I can tell you one hundred percent. I know that it's gonna be some kind of anime character. <laughs> <laughs> and you check, know our boy. And check back in two weeks. You know our boy. <laughs> but let's uh, let's let's. I see. will put down money on that. Do you want to spoil your costume? <laughs> or oh, no, 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 no! Don't spoil. I was gonna say, do you want to spoil your costume? Or when we film the podcast? Uh, fuck, we're gonna have to film a podcast the next day after my birthday party. No. We're filming it at your birthday party. Are you filming it at my birthday? We are. Just, no, you can. We, we take pictures and then uh, this time, if you actually edit it, you can put the pictures in the. Oh, podcast. I was gonna say wear our costumes for the podcast. You know, no, no, I don't think I can do that. We could oh? because we will just go straight from Hunter's 
birthday party into shooting the podcast Fuck that. <laughs> No, definitely not. I need a, I need I need some oh rest. Oh god, time. no whoa. <laughs> Imagine that. No, because mine is gonna involve makeup and uh oh. I don't know if ah. I'm gonna have enough of that particular kind of makeup to do it two times. Mm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Probably mm-hmm. there might be some left over, but it might not be enough. Do you want to spoil it, or do you want me to? Because if, if, if we're not going to wear it on the podcast, I think it's fine to spoil. Well, we we spoil it. it. I'll show a picture in one more week when it's actually Halloween. Please. Okay. I'm tired of this Halloween birthday talks. Okay. <laughs> well, too bad. We're, we're gonna keep going. What's your co- costume ideas? Uh, <laughs> I'm still debating mine. I wonder though, has there been any news regarding what partying is gonna be like? Oh, during that's what I was saying. Like I had a lot of people reach out to me and express that they were really interested in going to my birthday party because a lot of people, especially Koreans and a few foreigners that I've talked to, are kind of apprehensive about going out on Halloween that mm-hmm. weekend. And so I've had a lot of people be like, "Oh, I'm like really excited to go to your birthday party because like I want to do something for Halloween, but I also like would rather do something small and a little bit more contained right. and not go out as." A few people said, like, more of, like, a respectful thing, like, not going out and partying on the one-year anniversary of it. They want to do something like... small, and this man just makes a party with 130 <laughs> people. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, they're just like, – I think the <laughs> idea is, like, not going out to Itaewon and not going out to doing that kind of thing again mm. and just having something a little bit more private. Yeah. It, I say sm- it is 100 people, but it's still small, like, comparatively yeah, yeah, yeah. to, like – No, I'm just joking. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, have had, I, I have had people reach out and be like, I'm glad that there's something that I can go do uh-huh. that's not – going out and drinking at a club and stuff like that. That makes sense. I, I've seen sort of in different other groups people wanting to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. The type of people who usually would be the ones who say, let's go out for Halloween, mm. are the ones being like, let's get a party room. Yeah. Let's do let's something Yeah, smaller. I've seen that a lot too. Um, even my, my school, and I think this is true for all schools. Yeah, yeah. Like I they're not schools. doing anything yes. Halloween really? related. Yeah. And so my school, uh, instead of Halloween, because like I guess they already had an event planned or something, uh, they're just doing like it's gonna be like called a retro party. So we're supposed to dress up, but only like in it's retro like style. theme, retro, yeah. yeah, theme party. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. But it's like I don't. <laughs> what am I gonna wear? <laughs> <laughs> I got some uh, long pink socks. If you want, <laughs> your poofy pants are kind of retro. Yeah. Oh. No, not retro. Actually, yeah, uh, and I did think about that. I should just get one of those. What are they called? Those uh, uh, tie dye shirts. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, get one of those with my actually, poofy pants no, and put like those circles. <laughs> circle. The little hippie outfit. Yeah. Oh. That would and be good. Hair, actually, like just with little braids everywhere, and I'll just be like drop the tie dye. Oh wait, this is cool. Never mind. Yeah. I was gonna say drop the tie dye shirt and just get a uh, sort of. One of those vest jackets, yeah, yeah, but like yeah. those golden fluffy ones, and just shirtless underneath. No, it should be like, a, oh yeah, <laughs> like one of those um, brown leather vest jackets. Yeah, with the fr- like the frilly thing. Whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, where are we that's going? This is no, 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 no. No, that's hippie. But that's <laughs> like that's what comes hippie in my mind. Yeah, same here. Kind are, of we like s- are, we yeah, exactly are we getting hippie? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Are we getting hippie or are we just getting like eighties? Funk pop retro. No, no, Willie Nelson, dude. Or you just get like a tie dye t shirt with a big like marijuana leaf in the middle. No, 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 wait, oh, wait, this is I like it. No, no, and instead of like matter, it says something like hemp. <laughs> Pro hemp. Pro hemp. Do it, but use the, but instead of instead of the marijuana leaf, use the maple leaf from <laughs> no, no, a pro hemp shirt. Korea grows a lot of hemp and they use a lot of hemp. So supporting the, yeah. you know, local agricultural Support markets. The local. Support support local for soul hemp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure my boss will be thrilled with that idea. <laughs> so yeah, so if you're like Bryant or kind of similar in that you are love marijuana, um, <laughs> don't come to Korea because you can't have any of it here. <laughs> That's yeah, you can't have any true. legally. That's a big one. And so that kind of ties into our topic for the day. <laughs> mm. A topic for the day? The kind of people we have that time should, and should <laughs> yeah, we got time. We got a whole other round of video to make. But yeah, it's the kind of people that should and should not come to Korea mm-hmm. based off our opinions. So that is a big one. If you know, not that you can't have a good time, but if you are, let's say, overly reliant. Not reliant. <laughs> I was gonna say if you just love it and it's not something you'd be willing to give up. True. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Overly reliant in for different reasons mm. because some people use it. For medicinal purposes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. You know, which I do think you technically can get in Korea, but it is incredibly difficult. 
probably very expensive and too. very expensive that's pro- probably going to be the one sort of medicine pharmaceutical related product in korea that is gonna set you back a couple of bucks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one of the crazy things like well, i have a friend in america who her dog and i don't even know how people diagnose this i mean people much smarter than me obviously but her dog has anxiety and uh, for me, I'm just like, how does a dog have anxiety? Like, that's just a crazy. That's, no, that's how crazy the world is. So yeah. if, if you don't have anxiety, <laughs> <laughs> shit. I'm just like, how, how does a dog have, a, one, how does a dog have anxiety? And two, how do you diagnose that a dog has anxiety? That's crazy to me. Like, just that we can do that is impressive yeah. to me. And so she has, like, prescri- like, prescribed dog hemp, I guess. I don't know if it's hemp. I don't know it's what the. It's not hemp. No, it's hemp. No, hemp is the. THC? Something. THC, it's, yeah. That would be the. Okay, it's like dog want, THC yeah. mm-hmm. that she can give to her dog, and it just chills out and has a good time. Nice, love it. <laughs> Pro dog. <laughs> Pro dogs. For Pro dogs. dogs without anxiety. Yeah. So if you're a dog and you have anxiety, don't come to Korea. <laughs> <That's good>. <laughs> <laughs> Getting THC is gonna be. Yeah, but no, I think that is a good point. If you are someone who you know likes to go out and party and. Uh, Indulge mm-hmm, and those kind of things. Uh, it's probably you probably can get it. No, th- that's the scary part because you can get it, and that's why I used to it over reliant. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be tempted. Mm-hmm. And let me say, this is the one one of the no. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say this is the worst place because mm-hmm. Singapore <laughs> exists. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> true. But this is not a fun place. No, this is not one of caught. the places where you want to even try to look for it. I would say. Yeah. Because. Um, for me, I, I love smoking, and uh, yeah, but I haven't even really tried at all to find it here, and for two reasons, because I've heard how expensive it is, and then the second one is because I don't want to fucking get deported, Yeah, and it's really it really comes down to that, like, if you're here for a visit and something, yeah, you're going to get in trouble, and then you probably might not be able to come back, so if you want to risk that, but if you're looking to stay long-term, then... I would really say, nah, that's a no-go. Yeah, don't play with the fire. I can't remember if I've ever actually told this story on the podcast before because it happened way before. But, like, even – we're talking about, like, people actually looking for it mm-hmm. and that being an issue. There was a point at – one of, someone texted me and was like, hey, uh, there's this rumor going around Hongdae that you're a drug dealer. To you? Yeah. This person who, like, I've talked to a few times and, like, I know and we've, like, gone out and I've had drinks with it's them in It's always Hongdae. the ones you don't expect. They texted me and, like, hey, like <laughs> – I don't know what's going on with this. Like, I'm just hearing this from people that, like, the American guy named Hunter is the guy you can contact to get weed. And she was like, I just want to make sure that, like, this isn't you. Like, if, uh-huh. if, if that's – if if it is you, like, cool, it's under wraps. But, like, if it's not you, like, I will tell the people that I heard it from that it is not you. Uh-huh. Yeah. She was like, but I've just been hearing this rumor from multiple people. And I was like, fuck no, it ain't, it ain't me. Like, I, please tell everyone that it is not me. <laughs> And so they That's were like, exactly what a drug dealer would say, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them it's Nobby. But if they're looking, <laughs> I know a guy. But if they are. <laughs> no, but, but I do like, know who that hunter is. Know, yeah. so. so the crazy thing is I heard this from like two or three different people. <laughs> and I'm freaking out like this day because I'm like, I don't want to get deported. Like if this gets back to anything like that, that's a scary situation to be in. True. I would hope that, that the Korean police would believe my story, but it's the Korean police. So who knows what they would do. And so I went through all this stuff. I was like texting all these people, like trying to figure out what the fuck, where this rumor like started from. Turns out there was an American soldier mm. named Hunter who had weed and was dealing in Hongdae. And like a month after all this like drama happened of the day of me trying to figure out what was going on, I heard he was deported. <laughs> nice. Yeah. There For you. you. <laughs> yeah. So at least the Korean government scratched hunter off their list of like drug dealers to find so i don't think i i don't think they're searching for me when anymore. was was this when you were working as a no way after oh so this is even this was like this is like a year worked. and a half ago oh okay this That's, is pretty I recent think i remember you mentioned that yeah i mean i probably mentioned it to you guys i don't think mm. i mentioned this on the podcast hey. before no, no but it was a really scary situation because like <laughs> it's just it's such a serious situation that i feel like in the situation where like the police would f- for some reason come to me I don't think there's anything I can say to convince them not to deport me. I mean, they no, would I just take a look at you. I, I, I <laughs> this guy, the drug dealer? I don't think that they would deport you if they act without any but yeah. real evidence. I mean, they I would can't. hope so, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you don't really know, so it's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah. Which is why I never even tried, because, mm-hmm. like, I... 
I, I like to play with fire, but that's too much fire for me. That's too much. That's the uh, get deported kind of fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, no, I'm having a great time here. I love it here. I don't really, I don't want to get deported either. Um, which also reminds me, uh, I mean, just because we're talking about it, it's been like four years then that I haven't smoked any weed. Yes. Hey. Four years. It's, I'm not that happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I'm not, I'm not psyched about that. Was it hard at first, like coming coming here and like having to kind of be off of it? It's not. I don't think you that make it sound like the man was over reliant. Yeah, no. Were you no, over reliant? Like if you're if you're enjoying something, I like mean, to, to let cut me put it, it this way: like I, I smoked every day, so you indulged quite a bit. I did a lot, but like, no, no, but it's not. Still. It's not a. It's not a thing where like, I don't. I never considered it an addiction. Because okay, yeah. yeah, I don't. I wasn't trying to. Imply like that. when I got here, um. Like, sh- sure, you always have moments where you're like, man, I could really have a smoke right now. But, like, I'm not fucking staying at home like, oh, my God, I need some weed. Yeah. Scratching the no, dick. It's like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like me with 99 cent tacos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, actually, it probably is the same. Yeah. It's, just, it's like I'm not addicted to 99 cent tacos, but I fucking miss them. Yeah, yeah. but you're addicted to the fucking ting box tacos. huh? <laughs> I know, that's the problem. Jeez. <laughs> That's my issue, man. I just gotta so make my own tacos. I think that's one definite. If you really like partaking, uh, yeah, Korea's probably not the best place for you. And if you really like 99 cent tacos, also not the place for you. <laughs> I mean, but speaking about food, if you are the person with a lot of dietary restrictions, mm. either for, you know, self imposed restrictions or uh, sort of environmental beliefs, maybe even Religion. religious based beliefs. Yeah. It's Not to hard. say it's impossible, but do your research, especially outside of Seoul. Yeah. Look, mm-hmm. in Seoul these days, there are a lot of vegan-friendly places, mm-hmm. vegetarian-friendly places, alternative meat-based places. <laughs> and there's a lot of good Korean food that is, I would say, vegetarian-friendly mm-hmm. at a base level. Is yeah. sundubu chige considered vegetarian so or vegan? Here's the catch. If you don't put I cheese will. in it? Huh? No. Not just that, but many people are strict. And a lot of Korean food uses things like fish sauce mm. or fish-based ah. broth, pork-based broth. So even though you order something and it, they say it's vegetarian, the broth is Ooh. pork-based. That makes or something. it really so That hard. makes it really hard to actually find out mm-hmm. what the hell you're Because that was the first thing that came out. Man, it was like, chige, any kind of like soups and stuff would probably be good to go. But if that's the situation, yeah. yeah so even also, a yeah. lot of sundubu chige have like clam in them. Yeah. So if you're pescatarian, if you're pescatarian, yeah, you can get away with it. Yeah. But um, I'm Methodist, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'd say do your research before coming, especially outside of Seoul, because mm. you're not going to find a lot of friendly places, and then you are going to have to cook for yourself. Yeah. And also, uh, the ones that are, are pretty pricey as well. That's the other one, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not the kind of place you can go to. Like, if you're a vegan, like yeah. strict vegan, then it's, uh, there's a few places, but they're not cheap. It's one all. of those, like, kind of, like, like theme places because I know there's a v- really popular like vegan cafe in Hongdae but it's I've heard it's expensive too it's not that it's themed it's just like it's a vegan restaurant and yeah. so like everything there is vegan but it's expensive it's just like really fancy kind of place gotcha. they try to make it more no, upscale yeah kind of thing. I mean it not was, just that yeah. but your clientele's a lot smaller right and yeah. so you need to make bank on the people ah. that come mm-hmm. you can't charge five bucks for your cafe latte using normal milk when the price of your vegan milk is mm. much more expensive. It all circles back to tacos. It's the same thing. There's just not that many taco eaters. In if this man... That's how I, I understand everything. Oh, there are a lot of taco eaters. <laughs> Have you had the tacos in uh, the Seoul Central Market? No, what's her name? <laughs> That's why I said there are a lot of taco eaters. Nice. I, I, I recently <laughs> saw about this place. It's like highly recommended. As La the Kelle? Best. Huh? La... The name. What's the name? I forgot. La... La Carnitas? No, 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 no. no. Where did you see this place? Huh? Where did you? How did you find out about this place? I found out about it on Instagram. Yes, I know what you're talking about. And then I looked it up, and then it's like, yeah. The place's name is La. I can't get La Chel, La Kel, La. Is it new? I don't think. I don't think it's new. No, but this. But it's like in the market. Yeah, it's it's in the market itself, and they hand make the fucking black tortilla. Right? Yeah, I saw it. No, it. Hunter, this place we have to go. It looks. No, we have to go. So don't take down. Your dates. Take okay, us. I'm taking you. And you're, you're paying a hundred bucks. Also, don't, <laughs> hundred bucks? Oh, yeah. also, don't take a date to the yeah. market. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. 
At the rate fun. he's going, he needs to take the dates to the market. <laughs> tacos <laughs> ain't market, kicking in. Yeah, park sounds fun. But yeah, I think that is a very valid one because um, I've actually met some people who do have dietary restrictions and yeah. they have a hard time yeah. here. <laughs> Funny story. One of my <laughs> really good friends all the way down south, uh, even though we lived a couple of cities apart, whenever we went out to restaurants, she'd hand me her EpiPen. And she'd say, if my throat closes up and I fall over, just stab me here. <laughs> and I'll be, like, <laughs> I'll be like, oh my God. You're fucking shaking. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? I'm just, in my hand. Also, I just realized what this looks like, but damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd, like, and then she'd just start eating. And I'm like, can we please talk to the mm. staff before we just start chowing? Mm. She's allergic to fish. Gotcha. Which is a big problem yeah. when you can realize fish sauce is everywhere and yeah. in everything. Is bibimbap usually made with fish sauce? Because I feel like that's the one vegan dish. That <laughs> is <I hear>. what? <laughs> bibimbap. 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 It sounds like some sort of a song. Uh-huh. Bibimbap, sir. That's usually like the go-to vegan dish, right? Many times, yeah. It, it's a very vegan-friendly dish. Because I know sometimes they do put like a sauce in it. Yeah, they, the yeah it's mostly mm-hmm. gochujang. Okay. But I mean, a lot of bibimbap also has, you know, sort of the egg or... Alternatively, they put minced meat, yeah. which I believe you Americans say burger. No. I we say never. minced meat. You guys say minced meat? I mean, we have it. Fucking every video I, I watch, I homies will like say, add the burger. It's, it's burger when you when, when you it's like make a patty. No, no, I know, I know that, but I've, w- I've been watching so many weird American recipes, and they're like, add your burger, and then they grab minced meat, and I'm like, it's a burger when you make the minced meat into the patty, mm-hmm. like you just said. Which, by the way, kind of off topic, <laughs> not off topic, but fucking, I hate... One thing about Korea, they call this shit chicken burgers. It is. You cannot Don't have talk. a chicken burger. No, no, I'll talk about that. Let's go Why back not? to bibimbap. No, let's. It's I a wanna, chicken sandwich. No, I've had this argument with so many Americans. It's a burger is burger meat. No, a, a burger? burger is based no, on it roll. Isn't. And that's why. No, it isn't. A it's hamburger a hot is dog called roll. a hamburger because it came from Hamburg. Yes. That's all it is. Bro. No, no, bro. No, no, yeah, that's, no. That's why. Yo, any, anywhere in America, you go have. Something with a hamburger bun and but chicken, they call Hunter, it a chicken sandwich. let me stop you there. Anywhere America you always gets shit wrong. Yeah. Anywhere you go the rest of the world. <laughs> Anywhere you go in the rest of the world. I hate it so much. It's a chicken burger. I hate people calling it chicken Because you put, the chicken, you put the chicken on the fucking burger at all, sir. Yeah. <sighs> that's right. Disagree. And that's why when you put the chicken between two slices of bread, we say chicken sandwich. Also, <laughs> that's why... That's <laughs> This isn't a Korea thing either. Yeah. Everywhere is called a chicken burger. Yeah. Well, I've only been to Korea, so. <laughs> oh, f- time to travel. Get out of here. Get out of here. I've only been to America and Korea, <laughs> so. <laughs> My opinion is based off that. But um, but yeah, so vegans, maybe. <clears throat> just be prepared. Yeah. You yeah can serve, I you mean, can I think it. you can do it. It's just something that you really do need to think about beforehand mm-hmm. if you want to come here because it can be very difficult. It's not very accommodating, I would say. Mm-hmm. And especially when it comes to, like, I mean, like, you're going to make good friends, and most friends, like, your close friends are going to be accommodating. Mm-hmm. But if you're making, like, acquaintances and stuff like that, it's going to be really hard to, like, like, we, we've we talked in other episodes about how hard it is to, like, get close to Koreans. Mm. If you don't eat meat, God, it's going to be so And much. I think that brings me to brings the, the next one. one. Alcohol. Alcohol. Mm. Combine the two. Yeah. What? Why? Why alcohol? I mean, Korea is just an alcoholic country. <laughs> <laughs> that make it sound nicer. You talk about friends. So, you know, like Hunter was but saying, you, go, <laughs> out, so you go out with your friends, you eat, you drink. This yeah. is mm-hmm. Korea's number one favorite pastime. This is how they get, as they say, I want to get close to you. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> and, yeah. you know, this is how you become friends with people. Which is not to say that uh, you have to, mm-hmm. but, like, it's just, it is something that is very, very common here yeah um i have met some korean people too who don't drink Mm -hmm. but it's just it's not that common and i did a month without drinking oh true and i even went out true True. i was doing this the entire night but (laughs) i (laughs) i did a month without drinking and i went out (laughs) shaken yeah so if you um if you don't drink i think that is another thing to consider when it comes to meeting people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like having time with them because yeah, it's just, it's very common. It's like everywhere you go with Korean friends, you're going to drink at some point. And not mm-hmm. just friends. And, you know, the culture is changing slowly, but even at work. Yeah. yeah you get invited to staff dinners that, yeah. and the sort of CEO of your company or your principal at your school or whatever 
offers you a drink. And yeah, yeah. you and you <laughs> can't really say no. Yeah, you take a sip. Yeah. I mean, maybe <coughs> they'll be kind of understand, but the thing is, if they if you do say no, they kind of might take it as a a Defense. bit of a slight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit of a slight. It's like, oh, you don't want to drink with me. But that's why I say, you know, the the culture is changing. Yeah. People are being open to the idea mm -hmm. of. You know, not everyone wants to drink in this moment, mm -hmm. but especially for the older generation, it can come across as a slight. Also, <laughs> if like you want to get ahead at work, you better fucking drink with your boss. Oh yeah, yeah. Like actually, true though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. happen here. <laughs> yeah. You gotta drink with your boss, but then I'll drink your boss. <laughs> 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 and you like gotta serve him yeah. and everything yeah. with two hands. Like it's yeah, it's there's a very big alcohol culture here, I think. And kind of which I kind of like. Me too. <laughs> I think the three of us, I mean, the four of us, Dogger excluded. Uh, but I think also all of included. us love it. But uh, also sorry, included. Dogger included. <laughs> yeah. is, I mean, he's not here now, so excluded now, but included in the thinking. I think all of us agree that we like it. Right. Yeah. For, I mean, for South Africa, it's not bad. A lot of Koreans always are like, oh, Brandon, you drink a lot. Is this the same in your country? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I don't drink with my boss, but sure. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the same in America. Like, you can drink a lot in America. Yeah. I think it's pretty socially, it's very socially acceptable, but like, you don't really go out with your boss that mm -hmm. often. Well, I, I mean, I would. But I think <laughs> it's because the culture of having the huishik, like the yeah. work meeting, is not really that prevalent in other countries. Mm -hmm. But here, it, it kind of is. Like, I had this one boss who took us every two weeks. Wow. Yeah. He took us out for dinner, and then we'd drink until like 5 a.m. <laughs> Good times. And kind of going down that kind of path of talking about like, okay, well, if you're, you don't eat meat and you don't drink, it's going to be really hard at like making mm. friends and stuff like that. I want your opinion on this because I feel like in my experience, majority of Koreans, if you're not at like a foreigner bar, like a foreigner place are pretty introvert and pretty hard to like, they're not going to approach you first mm -hmm. in my, in my experience, maybe it's different for you guys. Um, so what do you think about like pretty introverted people coming to Korea? Because I think it's already kind of hard for, I feel like some introverts feel very hard to like go out of their way to make friends in other places. If you're coming to Korea, a country who's already just like the people are pretty introverted in my opinion anyway, it might be even harder to make friends. That's exactly that, what you yeah. just said. But uh, if you're introverted, do you really want to make other Yeah, that's the, that's the catch. Yeah. I think when you're introverted, it becomes a case of where you are because let's imagine you're in a dense uh, city like Seoul. Mm -hmm. You just need that one or two friends and you're mm, kind of right. set. You know what I'm saying? Now imagine you're an introverted person in the fucking countryside. Yeah. Oof. Huh? You don't even get that one friend. <laughs> 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 and at that stage, you're not introverted anymore. You're now a hermit. <laughs> 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 and that's when people start becoming, you know, crazier and crazier and you lose the plot. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, I mean, I consider myself to be somewhat introverted, which is why I said, like, at your party, I'm not going to mm -hmm. thrive, because I don't like being in a big group of people. Um, but that being said, uh, like, when I first got here, and the funny thing is I got here during COVID, so, like, COVID time was fucking fine for me, because I was just <laughs> chilling at home, I was playing, playing games. Playing Legends. <laughs> yeah, I was fine. I Losing was so in gold. fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was so fine. But then also... Um, yeah, at some point you do want to meet some people. And like in my case, I joined the League of Legends uh, Kakao group chat. Mm -hmm. And then I met people there. And then I was fucking chilling. Yeah. Just chilling the whole time. And until now. So I don't think that it's very difficult. But like you said, if you go to the countryside, it might be a lot more. Mm -hmm. But if you're, uh, if you're in Seoul, I think there are ways where you can find people who have shared interests. And then you'll eventually meet one, two, three people that you get along with, and you're fine. Yeah, we've kind of gone negative. Let's go positive. Let's That's say that's not negative. It's not fine. negative. This is no, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not, I just mean like we started out with the idea of like, oh, should introverted people not come to Korea? Like that's how. It, uh, no, I'm saying no, they should. I, no, no, I agree. <laughs> I'm just saying that's how that's I presented fine. the question. So let's go positive, like more positive, and say what kind of people should come to Korea? Like what? Uh, what kind of if uh, they're this type of person, we recommend you should come to Korea. You'll love it here, kind of thing. Hikers. <laughs> uh, hikers? <laughs> Motherfuckers who want to go on a hike every Ooh. Saturday, Sunday morning, sure. come. I think so. You can find all the mountains, and if you don't like all the mountains, you can find your mountain and just True. keep yeah. going back. And keep going back. Especially if you live in the outskirts of Seoul, there are so many different places. Like, there's always one next to you. Even mm -hmm. where I am, there's one right next to me. No, but that's what I was saying. You, you mentioned the outskirts. You can go to Seoul Palace, you know, mm. and... 
there's a mountain right behind it. Yeah. You don't have to leave the city. That's the, the funny part. I think, so I think is even a mountain. less just hiking people, just people who like the outdoors. I think Korea, like, Seoul is pretty whatever, but, like, it's, you, it's very easy to get outside of Seoul and to get to, like, more rural True. areas. Mm -hmm. If you like the outdoors, if you like walking, if you like hiking, if you like just glamping, going, glamping or anything, <laughs> like, I think Seoul is, or Korea is a great country for that. And, like, mm. before I came here, like, Chattanooga, Tennessee, is is very highly considered, especially around the south where people know it really well, as a very, like, outdoorsy city. It's a lot of hiking. There's just a lot of active people in the city. And I think, like, coming here, I kind of feel a similar vibe obviously on a much grander scale um but that kind of sense of like people being kind of outdoorsy and being interested in that mm -hmm. kind of thing i think people from chattanooga who enjoy that lifestyle of living there would love soul i would put a small caveat though if you like like hiking as in you know you kind of get lost like there's a path but it's not it's just kind of a path then it's not so much mm. because in korea it's like they make little roads for you in every fucking mountain. Mm -hmm. So you're going upstairs as opposed to actually hiking the mountain. Which is good. Yeah, it but <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> Don't go off trail, Brian. <laughs> no, I was I'm told just to, I was told to deliver a message to you. Huh? Don't go off trail, Fuck Brian. That, dude. I never get lost. I will say that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I never get lost. My uh friend of mine works. Uh, with the let's say finders force in Korea, mm -hmm. where they find lost people. No, listen, I don't. Don't get I, off trail. That's, get off, that was no, that listen, was a number one advice. It's not, I don't get <laughs> off trail. I just followed the trail that is like that has less people. Mm. So like the more difficult trails usually. Uh -huh. But I'll stay on those trails. Yeah. Okay. So like like Bukansan has one of the trails <laughs> that is like the really difficult mm -hmm. one. But if you follow that one, I think you get up the, the to the top in an hour and a half, as opposed to like the four hours that it takes on the easy ones. And um, it's great. I love it. And you always meet like just about an average of 20 people on the way, like either going up with you or going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's a, it's a trail. Yeah. I don't just like fucking get <laughs> no, <I just laughs> cut into the man the just takes a hard lift. There's, there's no lift, but he has made one. <laughs> <laughs> no. See ya, Brian. <laughs> I, I mean, I lived in Ecuador, dude. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, from the, he came down the mountains. And the thing is that in Ecuador, like if you do that, you'll get lost. But at least there's no animals that might, you know, attack you. Uh, there's animals here that can attack you. There's wild boars in the mountains. No, that, that's oh, the fun, that, no, that's the funny thing. Korea doesn't have a lot of you know, sort of predator type animals or mm -hmm. things, or Except a lot of Brian. dangerous things. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> you calling this man a predator? <laughs> yeah, damn. Um, but you, you know, the way it is yeah. in the club. It's <laughs> 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 the wild boars are really big and so fucking aggressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Th oh, that's geez. a boar. Fuck that. I remember Jeez. when I lived with my ex, she texted me one day. I was like, please. She was like, don't come home. And I was like, what? She was like, there's a boar loose around our apartments. And I was <laughs> like, what? She was like, yeah, just don't, just wait. Wait till they catch it. And I was like, that's crazy, but okay. I guess I won't go home now. A boar will fuck you up. Hell yeah. <laughs> Para Pumba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of want to get a boar tattoo as well. Do it. I, I probably will. Do it. Well, it's so funny to me because like, when I think of a soul, I think of it being like a big city, right? And so like <laughs> in my mind when I'm talking about it being a very outdoorsy area, in my mind I'm like, how does that make sense cuz it's a big city? Cuz like if you think about places like New York or LA, like it's just you're not mm -hmm. you don't have I mean it, you can do outdoorsy stuff, but like it takes so long like especially for New York like to go outside of New York to get to a place where it's going to be like a nice hiking area or nice like outdoorsy stuff. But soul is like it's here. Like, it's in Seoul. It's, like, right outside Seoul. It's very easy to get to. Yeah. And so it is a very unique unique place. I mean, yeah, Korea you can take a sense. train yeah. to most places. Korea yeah. is a small country. Yeah. 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 Makes those types of things a lot and more accessible. And it's full of mountains. Accessible. Yeah. 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 But what else would you say is another kind of person that... Well, the minute Hunter skipped in saying as well, you know, sort of Seoul, 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 my mind just hyper-focused on if you love the fast life. Yeah. Korea is so fun. Mm. Which is so funny because if we're going to recommend outdoorsy people, like you would think they're the kind of people that like the slow life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They would love it here for the outdoors aspect, but they might not like the fast the food Yeah, the fast life aspect. You know, that bali bali culture. Mm -hmm. Shit. Bali bali means fast, fast. Quick, quick. Quick, quick. quick. Korean, yeah. <laughs> and everything is just bali bali. Like Brian mentioned, 
man, you go work, you go up with your boss, you get home at 5 a.m., shit, you, you better be up at 8. <laughs> 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 we going, we going, there's no stopping. There's no calling in what's and being uh, like, oh, feel good. What's uh, your relationship with the Balibali culture like? I haven't really experienced it that much yet, so I think you guys have to kind of carry this conversation. How have you not? Because it's more I mean, like no, no, school stuff. Not, like not just that, but I mean like in your daily life. Like we've spoken about public transport quite a bit on the show before. I feel like people on the trains and buses, they're fucking moving. Before we get to the stop, they're getting off. They're standing at the thing. They're buzzing their cards. And I'm like, homies, we're yeah. about three minutes away. You can sit back down and just chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? there are some like cases where I think people are like impatient about certain things. Yeah, that's. I feel like that's just the sort of the trickle-down effect yeah. of the Bali Bali. You know, they... Mm. In every waking moment of their life, they're sort of pushing. Mm -hmm. And so if you like that style, that's mm -hmm. great. And my my sister, who recently came to Korea and then we went to vacation in Japan, uh, came with her, one of her school friends and then another, my cousin as well. And my sister had warned them. She was like, be careful. Brandon, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, he goes. And he fast. will leave you. Yeah. So if you're not fast, yeah. oof, don't cry. Well, I'm excited actually talking about family and stuff visiting. I was talking to my mom the other night. She and maybe my aunt are planning to come to Korea maybe in February. When's your brother coming? My brother will not be coming. I don't want to hear nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, they're about to have their baby. Oh, yes. Month, yes. So yes. they'll have a newborn. So they won't be coming anytime soon. Uh, I think my mom's going to come because I was talking to her and I was like, you know, it'd be nice to have like one family member at my graduation. <laughs> I know my sister and my brother-in-law. What do you mean? Brother -in -law aren't I'm coming. there, baby. <laughs> I'm in the front you know row. What I mean. I'm in the front row. Huh? You want flowers? I hope you guys will be. You want flowers in a Budweiser? I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. A bouquet of Budweiser. Yeah. A bouquet of Budweiser. That'd be awesome. I would love that. No, but just like my actual like family, family. I, my my sister can't come. My brother in law can't come because they got two babies. My brother's about to have a baby. He definitely can't come for the next couple of years. So, my mom was like, you know, I'll go. So we've been looking at flights and stuff. And maybe my aunt will come too because she wants to come to Korea. I just feel bad because it's gonna be like in the middle of the winter, <laughs> like. Nice Probably week. the worst time to come is in the middle of February, but nice cuddle weather. Yo, let's just put this up because you're just like rocking your microphone. They didn't rock it. Yeah. <laughs> with with these what? My what? With your shirt. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. you pointed at stuff. Yeah, I don't know where you're going with that. <laughs> uh -huh. No, yeah, but yeah. So yeah, I, I think exciting. they'll kind of suffer from the same thing of like kind of like being told to move fast and stuff oh, yeah? like that. Yeah. Because I, I think my mom and my aunt especially are kind of chill, chillax people. Although, <laughs> if my aunt does come to Korea. I think you guys are going to love her. But I'm also really like She's slow an IPA pace. drinker. She loves beer. Ooh. Yeah, she loves nice. drinking. I'm also really like slow pace, chill, but I don't feel it gets to me that much. Oh, yeah? Like, yeah, okay, it's like pali pali at a certain time, but then at another time it's just relax. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. For me it isn't, at least. That's what kind of my point was. Like, I, I don't think I've really like – experienced it that much mm. in my i mean uh, there are cases like you said like in the subway and stuff like that where maybe it's affected me but it's not been something where i feel very like impacted by it mm -hmm. so what would you say is a good person to come then i think non-weed smokers <laughs> uh, i think um huh? it's probably not that many people but people who have kind of a similar experience in life as i have so what I mean by that is... Um, Brian, that is unbelievably hyper-specific. No, it's not. <laughs> it's to not. move from Ecuador it's to not. the U.S. No, to I'm back to Ecuador the to China? I'm not talking about the specifics. <laughs> I'm talking about people who have moved around in their lives and had to like resettle to different countries, experience different cultures, and have just, because of that, become adaptable to that. Mm -hmm. So where like, just cultural things don't really get to them that much because... It's like, yeah, I knew it was going to be like that, you know? So instead of, uh, like, fussing or, or uh, complaining about certain things being different, it's like, no, yeah, it's supposed to be different. That's why I'm enjoying mm -hmm. it. Like, mm -hmm. I enjoy the differences. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, people who have experienced different cultures, maybe lived in a different country at some point in their lives and kind of have seen – but and, and by different countries, I mean, like, different – that are not I would in the same line. Yeah, I was going to say, know? I would actually, instead of saying different countries, go with different cultures. Yeah. And that's why I almost want to pivot yours the other way and say, people who aren't adaptable won't make a good fit. Because mm. like you just said, when you have experienced different cultures, mm -hmm. and not just, you know, simple differences where they are very different to your own 
you know, let's say born culture, mm-hmm. you're going to have an easier time just fitting in anywhere. Yeah. Whereas people who don't have that experience to come to Korea, which is so very different from Western culture, mm-hmm. it can be quite jarring. That's really yeah. interesting because the one I have in my mind right now mm. was people who are interested in like learning about different cultures who haven't had that like experience of being abroad and stuff like that. I was going to say Korea is a great place because it's very easy to like Mm, get accustomed to it no, as yeah, a Westerner no, because yeah. there are like obviously like English is very prevalent here like you can use English pretty much also true mm. yeah you can get around with English mm. and be okay you're not gonna be like lost like if you go to a different country like I don't know like Taiwan or like I don't know what other countries are more difficult because I haven't been there but just saying like Korea <laughs> Korea has been like at least if I didn't really like how do I say this I mean, for me, like like he, like he said, like someone like me who just didn't have experience living in other countries or being in other cultures, coming to Korea was pretty easy for me because it was very accessible and like easy to. No, but learn that's that. why you made the key point of saying the word. You had an interest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you I'm know, saying people I, who are interested in like yeah. living abroad, but maybe haven't had that experience and are worried, like, oh, what if I go to a country and I don't know how to speak the language and I can't get around no, and I don't understand the saying. customs? You said like, you were interested in Korea, which you've spoken about. Yeah. It's again, you know, sort of anecdotal, but I know so many people who were interested in living abroad came to Korea and were like, fuck that shit. Mm. Mm. The culture is so very different. They wanted the experience of living abroad, but that difference became really difficult. Gotcha. I do and think that so there's also a, something for people who have um, too many expectations about Korea. The Korea boo. I, I was about to ask, what are your thoughts on <laughs> the Korea boos? Come or don't come? I think just. Try to ground your expectations. Yeah. Because um But my opa <laughs> and my Nuna. I have Ooh, an opinion, but there's Brian there's first. some things about that that we can probably talk about on the Patreon because uh, you know. But I think um like for example, okay, uh, one one very clear example for me is I lived in Shanghai and Shanghai is a massive fucking city. It's full of skyscrapers and like all of them have these lights and it's really beautiful, like the, the, the architecture and everything. It definitely has its negative sides that Korea has, it, where Korea is much better. But um, if that's kind of what you expect to see, like these beautiful tall buildings and these beautiful lights and everything, yeah, I was very uh, underwhelmed by Korea mm-hmm. when I came here, or by Seoul at least. Because then I just saw like, like in 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 Shanghai, you would see even just random apartment buildings are fucking beautiful, right? Like there are some that are just like whoa, but then here I was, it's like every apartment building is just the same fucking box. <laughs> the concrete jungle. It's the, the concrete same. Jungle it's the same box with a little number on the side, like six one two or something, and mm-hmm. it just looks oh, like random a, English phrase. Yeah, and it just looks like I don't know, like a like s- like a farm where you're just like raising animals <laughs> or something. It's so weird. All right, so yeah, uh, basically I would just say temper your expectations because if you think it's going to be this amazing thing in every aspect, it's probably not. There's no place that is actually like that. I can name a couple of places. (laughs) Yeah. Like uh, for me, buffets. (laughs) <laughs> Buffet is always amazing places. No, no, I mean like, like I mean. <laughs> no, I, I know what you say. I know what you say. <laughs> I actually had something that I was gonna touch on with what you were just saying, but now I can't remember what it was. You're talking about the big city and the lights and the stuff, and well, right the before that, what were we talking about? Expect Caribous coming to you. Yes. Korea. Uh, I was gonna say, yeah, ground your expectations. If you're interested in coming to Korea because you've watched. Korean dramas or K-pop, I recommend come here and do like if if you have the option, do the language school, do a short term stay, like something that will let you stay for like three months no, no, to no, no. like four or five months. Get the experience. Don't commit yourself to a year or two years as an English teacher. I think that's the biggest issue that I've heard from people that I've been around is people who come to Korea as because an English teacher is an easy way for them to get here and they get here and they have to commit to this year or two and then they get here and it's not like what they thought it was, but they're stuck. And so like if you have the opportunity, you should come here for like a month or two and just really experience it like and just figure out what it's actually going to be like living here before you commit to that long term stay. There's a better visa. Korea has a K-pop visa or a K-Hallyu visa. Really? Yes. I it was supposed to come out this year. Oh. I haven't actually followed up to see if it was released yet. Interesting. But they've got a visa specifically tailored for people who are 
interested in Hallyu, the Korean wave, yeah. the K wave. And so the idea is that you come for three to six months mm -hmm. and they enroll you into either a singing school, a acting school, mm -hmm. a dance school, something sort of K-pop orientated yeah. and they give you that sort of I would imagine that's very like performance based though and a lot of people aren't really coming here because they want to be performers they just come here because they see the culture You on, on will TV be stuff. I mean like I'm sure they're very are surprised very by the people who should not be interested <laughs> in becoming performers <laughs> that say I want to be an idol I mean I know I there I'm there a specific person came to my mind that goes to my school but uh, no, I get what you mean. I'm just saying, like, I feel like there are the other aspect of them, and especially it's just English teachers that I can that I've had the experience of meeting that just like talked about how they don't really like it here, and they came here because they were really interested in Korean culture, and now they got here and they're like, wow, it's not really what I thought it was gonna but be like. It's like yeah, that's the sort of other thing of why I also said you know, when I mentioned when I came here, fuck, I wasn't gonna stay in Seoul. Yeah. Now I feel like I get Korean culture, and I'll say Seoul is it's Korea. But it is very different than having lived in the countryside. Yeah. You know, I got something to say about Korea booze, though. What about Tell him? us about it, Hunter. Oh, I'll tell you. On the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> this man. A tease without finishing the job. Disgusting. Yeah, check out our Patreon. We'll see you guys over there. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.